Oh, you know what we didn't do? What? We didn't record our intro for YouTube. Tech Nabbit. (laughs) Should we do that real quick? (laughs) Yeah, do it. Okay. Hi. Uh, (laughs) Y'all Sam. (laughs) This is Sam. Welcome to the Magic Word, our chaotic good podcast. (laughs) That's it. I think that's our tagline, is we're just chaotic good. (laughs) I'm crying. I'm crying. (laughs) Oh, how about this? Hey YouTube, I'm Mrs. Dr. Lupo. Let's give her a second to not be crying. We'll start that over again. <gasps> uh, yes, stage presence. Here we go. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Hi YouTube, I'm Mrs. Dr. Lupo. I'm Sam. And today we are going to be talking about the story of how we got into streaming. Yeah, going to talk about our streaming journey. So buckle up and get ready for the ride. Like and subscribe so you can see the next video. Okay, bye. Hi. Hello. It's Friday. Again, we say that every single time. (laughs) Friday. Because it's always Friday when we're here, right? It's always a big celebration. I love Fridays. It's Friday. And then the song just goes in my head over and over again. (laughs) Ready, set. Hello. Hello. We're here. Good time zone to you. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this is episode 14. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That. I don't know. It feels like we've been doing this forever, but then it also feels like we're still, you know, Bambi stepping it a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's like with anything with streaming, you always have technical issues and a way to advance. So we, yes. we are always Bambi stepping. I think we're going to be baby stepping for a little while. (laughs) And that's okay. Episode 50 will be okay. Episode 50? Okay, that's the goal is to not be Bambi anymore. (laughs) By episode 50. So we have a long. We will have strong, muscular legs by episode 50. (laughs) But like 2022 could be better. (laughs) Just enjoy it for 2021. Oh, yes. Baby steps until you get big girl steps, right? I think once we start getting more guests on and stuff like that, um, we had a very productive meeting this week. And so we have a long line of guests and episodes ready for you guys. Uh, And we're just kind of figuring out, you know, the Tetris puzzling of where everybody goes and when. But I'm pretty excited for for what we have coming up. So. Ooh, we have so many different creators. Like, I don't think y'all are ready for these good people we got on our list. <laughs> I'm stoked. <laughs> but what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about, well, okay, so if y'all are new here, then maybe you've missed past episodes, but we've been kind of in this interview series. Um, so Sam and I both interviewed each other for one week, and we're also learning more about one another. So we've also talked about where we came from um, and with like our spouses and maybe a bit like growing up and stuff like that as well. And now we're getting into our streaming journeys. So where we basically started, what kind of got our foot into this gaming industry to where we are now? I think it's going to be a good one. Mine's going to be a little bit different than yours. I know. Writing the questions, I was like, how will Sam answer some of these? Oh, well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> guess we'll find out on the show. <laughs> oh, you know what we learn. didn't do? What? We didn't record our intro for YouTube. Tech Nabbit. <laughs> Should we do that real quick? <laughs> yeah, do it. If you haven't yet, we have YouTube. Go subscribe. <laughs> Go subscribe. Let's refresh. Refresh. 25. <laughs> 25, yay! We're big time now. <laughs> Dang, sponsors. There's 97 of you in here so far, though. So come on. (laughs) Moving on up. (laughs) Anyways, yes, um, we did decide that we are the chaotic good show. Um, You guys are the magic beans. And uh, that's Butters over by Sam's shoulder. Yeah. Uh, What what was his full name again? Wasn't it like Mr. Butters? Wasn't it Mr. Peanut Butters? Oh, yeah, Mr. Peanut Butters. Yeah, I believe. Or he can be like, Sir General. (laughs) Sir Five Star General of the Peanut Butter Army. Sir General Motors Peanut Butter. (laughs) General General Butters. Oh, he can be General Butters. (laughs) 
Oh, I like General That's Butters. his little pet name, but he is Mr. Peanut Butters. Yeah, he's so authoritative. I love that for him. He's just, <laughs> did you know that he's breathing in this screen? No, is he? <laughs> okay. We so... were going through, tell the, tell the intro story. Okay, so y'all have seen our intro screen where it's like the spring and beautiful garden uh, greenhouse. And I noticed a few of like the moving objects in it, Sam noticed too. And then uh, she was like, oh yeah, did you know that this moves too? And there was one thing where in the beginning there's a ladle. And I didn't see the ladle and the thing pouring into the cauldron. And I was like, that moves? And so we went through. <laughs> And, and the pinpointed lights every single thing. Yeah, that moves. And I didn't know that Mr. Peanut Butters also moves under there. And now he's moving in this since when? <laughs> All right, let's go to the guest real quick. He moves in here too, right? I don't know, yes, he? he's breathing <gasps> he very slightly. And then the fire moves. And then the lights twinkle. And then the book. And that's Dang it in here. Amazing. Oh, you can see my mic in this one. Oops. Oh, the lights are tinkling. Tinkling? Twinkling. Oh, I hope they're, twinkling. they're going to the bathroom. <laughs> I sure hope not. Please, and then no. here, let's see. We have the twinkle lights. We have the clock. We have the fairy dust. We have the teacup and the, the cauldron mug, with yeah. the smoke and the, the book and Mr. Peanut Butters. E yes, there's going to be something that's moving that I never saw before. And like everybody the likes the face too on the pot. Wait, there's a face on it? You didn't notice there's a face on that white pot? <laughs> no. <laughs> what are we paying for? <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't know what to say. Oh, before we get started, I guess maybe we, since we're talking about screens and stuff like that, we uh, do need to have some more screens made mm -hmm. um, because yes. we have some ideas. I didn't put my green screen. My God. Who are we today? Hold on. <laughs> oh, wow. You've got a Herman Miller Logitech chair. Love that for you. <laughs> I don't know who I am today. We're we're doing great. Hey, Maude, you dropping that YouTube link? Go subscribe. <laughs> that's, that's it today. We're at 30. Nice. <laughs> I can't. I'm done. <laughs> this is the most scuffed hold yet. On, hold on. We're going back here. Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> whatever, start over. Hi everybody, welcome to the Magic Word. It's Friday. Welcome. This is the first time you're seeing us today. Ta <laughs> Happy episode 14, Sam. How are you doing? Okay. I don't know. We are a mess. We are such a mess today. Anyways, are you guys Beautiful. interested in watching us play video games together? Yeah, so we actually get talked about potentially maybe once a month having like a, a a gaming portion so like one show will not be the podcast will be video game so sam and i could play like stardew valley we could hang out on each other's animal crossing islands we could find some little indie games um to play together or anything like that uh about scary games we'll see if i can convince sam come here sam come here. No, no. <laughs> no so yeah well um yeah y'all like that perfect okay. i think that's something that we we need to figure out um i think i logistically know how to make it work um so we just need yeah. to Test it, but I think it would just be, you know, every once in a while it'd be nice to take a little break and find some cute little indie games to play and maybe showcase and stuff like that. I think that would be yeah, um I I think that'd be fun. So Sounds now good. that I'm crying and my <laughs> stomach hurts because I've laughed so hard. Calories burn today. Let's start our show. <laughs> yep. So what you're here for, this is episode 14, and it's all about our streaming journeys. Oh, but actually, before we get into that, because we usually start this way, Sam, how's your week been? Fairly super chaotic because we don't know what we're doing today. <laughs> I love that for us. My <laughs> week was my week was fine. I nothing nothing to report really um, that I can <laughs> think of. The end. No. <laughs> love that. Uh, my week has been. Very good for me personally. Started some new medicine and I'm feeling great. So it's been honestly a plus. <sighs> but 
But other than that, oh my gosh, I have been so obsessed with Minecraft. By the way, Sam, like if we can just play Minecraft. Your together. mods that you have on your Minecraft are so They're pretty. They're so pretty. I don't have that many either. I only have three. I've really? got a shader, I've got a texture pack, and I've got a furniture mod. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And it looks like a little fairy village. But yeah, so that's that's what's been going on with me. Just a lot of Minecraft. Oh my God. I like that you've been yeah. doing makeup in Minecraft, right? Where you get oh, ready on stream and then play like Minecraft. Me. It's honestly kind of nice because then I can wake up in the morning and not feel rushed to do like yoga or relax. Mm -hmm. So I can get ready. I know today I was like, dang it, I got to get ready before <laughs> stream. Oh, darn. <laughs> if we did a makeup on the magic word uh, stream, I would be done in like less than 10 minutes and I'd just sit That's here true. and watch you. <laughs> I need at least like maybe half an hour. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. Or we could do, uh, I could, I could do your makeup. Like like uh like what you do on I can do it on me. Oh yeah, where I can show you my super simple. Do I have makeup on? But yes, I have makeup on. <laughs> Did y'all see Sam's hair? By the way, nobody's commented. Look at Sam's hair. It's shorter. And then she like did this whole style. Like what the heck? Looking I'm like a, a new a woman. Beautiful, um, beautiful I actually princess. have you seen Raya in the Last Dragon yet on Disney Plus? I haven't. I keep hearing about it though. I need. It's to so watch. good. But the mm -hmm. the bad guy girl oh. in the um, mm -hmm. in the movie, uh, she has super short hair where it's like all buzzed. Mm -hmm. And then she has like a rolled braid right here. And I was oh, trying to figure yeah, out how so. to like pull and roll a braid up here to have hair like that. <laughs> it, it was taking forever. Dang, the I end. love that. <laughs> the end. All right. You well, didn't realize then, um... it was shorter? I cut off like five or six inches. <laughs> it might be clipping like with the camera too, maybe like maybe. Yeah. Just... Well, I mean, before my hair know. would just go all the way like off camera, but mm -hmm. now it's not. We have 35 subscribers, by the way. <laughs> <gasps> up. Holy heck. With zero videos. <laughs> That's right. right. We got YouTube. Ah, <laughs> thank you, Harley, <laughs> for doing the magic word. YouTube has been added. Yes. Um. OK, so our weeks were good. Which is good. Yeah, that is good. We haven't had like a both duly super good weeks yet. Yeah, normally one of us is like, oh, you know, it's been a little chaotic or things are just not good. But like, look at us. Hello, March. <laughs> Greetings. It's our month. Ben's birthday is coming up too. In <gasps> eight exciting. days. Dang. His birthday He's presents show up today. And that means I have eight days that I have to sit on them and not show him. <laughs> <laughs> are you <laughs> Like holding on to surprises. Yes. Well, because my one of my love languages is gift giving and receiving. And so as soon as a gift gets here, not even that, sometimes like I'll order it. it and then I'll be like, can I tell you what I buy you? <laughs> I don't even <laughs> give him the opportunity <laughs> to, uh. to open it. But it's something that you can do with a group of people. Part of his present is. Um. And so I, we have family coming for dinner tonight, and so I kind of like want, <laughs> I no, kinda want to know what it so we can play. <laughs> I kind of want to know what it is. Would Ben listen to this? I don't know. Uh, no, but 112 people that are viewing would definitely go oh, over to true. his channel that's and tell true. him. Get out of here. Wait, speaking of things that people can do together, I got the Stardew Valley board game. Oh, I want that so bad. Oh my gosh. We're going to play it tomorrow. Like it's a part of my Saturday agenda with the family. I'm so excited. They it like says on the box that it's it could take like 45 minutes per player to like get through the game. I'm so excited. That's awesome. I don't know what Wait, 45 means. minutes per player or for per game? Per player. Like add an extra 45 minutes onto your game oh, nice. because it's gonna take that long. Which I mean it, it's kind of like Monopoly. Monopoly can take a long time as right. well. So, we played a game yeah. with Ben's um, oldest brother, Joe, and, and his wife, Lynn, uh, mm -hmm. called Arkham Horror, a board game. And it yeah. took like 40 minutes for Joe to set it up. And then it took us about two and a half hours to play the game. What? Yeah. Nice. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Um, wow, we have been just chatting. Y'all, should we get into what our... Uh show is supposed to be about today our streaming journeys um sam really how, did, how did you get into streaming um well my husband <laughs> uh i but the the reason why i started streaming is because i wanted to know what it was like to do ben's job um oh. and he did the same thing for me when we first started dating when he was in college 
he needed to uh, have an art credit filled for college. And he met me and knew I was into photography. So he took a photography class. So that way he could speak to photography with me and understand when I was telling Mm -hmm. him things and stuff like that. So he he took the steps to understand something that was super important to me. And so I was like, let me start streaming just so I can see what it's like. Uh, And Mm -hmm. it's something that I really fell in love with, just being able to sit and hang out and chill, but not have a ton of pressure because like it's it's not my job. (laughs) It's just for fun. Um, So, yeah, I guess I started. No, how long someone just just subscribed for almost over two years. I've been partnered for at least two years. Has it been two years? Oh my gosh, I forget that like a whole year has passed of us not doing anything. Right. A whole year where I didn't stream at all. Really. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's been, I've been streaming for about three years now. Nice. So you started roughly in 2017? Yeah. Uh, well, no, wait. We were in the old house when I started streaming in the basement. Oh, wow. So it's been maybe four years? Oh, we've been in this house for three years this month or next month. And then I had my office upstairs for in the old house for about a year before we moved. And then so, yeah, it's been like maybe four and a half to five years. Nice. Nice. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) Love that. What about you? How did you get started into streaming? So I got into streaming because uh, my husband was actually watching somebody. I always forget his name and Eric always tells me what it is. And I still always forget. And he's destiny community. But anyway, he was um, soloing Crota for the first time. And, you know, that was a big deal back then to do the raid solo. Because we're just like, what? How do you do that? Uh, So I was I saw Eric watching him solo Crota. And I was like, what is this site? Like, how are you watching somebody live? Like, do this. Um, and then I I got on Twitch. I got the I got on the desktop and I was just like, oh, are there other directories? And so I started searching like just random games. And this is like, oh, do they have this game or this game or games like this? And then I fell into The Sims 4 and I was like, well, do they have The Sims? And so I clicked on The Sims and I found a couple that was streaming The Sims. And I became uh, a part of that community. Um, So in December of 2014. And then uh, like as I was a part of it more and more, I was like, you know what? I can do this. (laughs) Like I can easily do this. Uh, But I didn't have the technology for it. So what I did was in February of 2015, I grabbed all of my medical textbooks from college wasn't using them anymore (laughs) I got my Xbox Connect and that was like my camera and I would like stack it up on that uh those books uh and then I was using the initially I started streaming in February in my bedroom so I was on my bed college books connect uh heads old headset where like the one earpiece isn't even like an earpiece it's a plastic and then like the mic and then I had destiny up and i had it snapped when snap was a thing on xbox and then i had my chat um next to it and so there's no game audio whenever you have it snapped so i wasn't listening to anything either (laughs) that was play it was difficult because i was doing like raids and stuff but uh so that's how i started however i only streamed in my bedroom for roughly like two weeks because the internet was so bad back there And then I slowly migrated to our living room and it was the same setup except on my coffee table and our TV was like up here. So like people would come in and be like, why am I looking at your neck? And I'm like, well, because my TV is up here and I'm on the floor. (laughs) And so like my couch is in the background and oh, it was was so scuffed. But like that was a that was Ben's startup, too. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. It's funny that that's how some of us start. I didn't, so I tell people that I officially really didn't start streaming until May of 2015 because it was just so much chaos, and especially like with Leif, I'd have to put him in bed or there were nights where he was having a rough night, so I wouldn't stream. So it was not consistent, um, but I technically started in February of 2015, but I went more uh, 
like not really full time, but like this is something that I want to do in May of 2015. So, yeah. And were you still <laughs> at your previous job when you started that? So, uh, I was doing dispatching and then the job was not working out for what Eric's schedule was and my schedule. So I couldn't anywhere. I was home. So I was like, how can I potentially bring income to my family, but stay home? Like, I don't want to do an MLM or um, anything like that, that, whoa, hello, wind, uh, or anything that is just like marketed to moms at home and being a mom boss. I'm just like, that's not for me. So whenever I heard that you could potentially make income off of it, I was like, well, love video games, love entertainment. Let's try it. So that's what I started with. Hmm. And <sighs> yeah. so you basically then started in full time technically or. Yeah, I would say like May 2015 was my like start of full time. Um, I wasn't it's hard to call it full time because I wasn't getting 40 hours. Right. But then again, I'm still not getting 40 hours because most of it's off screen. Yeah. So it's like. What do you consider full time streaming? <laughs> I think when you are when it's your your full income or majority income mm. is when oh, I would consider cool. full time. <laughs> but I was streaming as much as I could to make it my job. Yeah. So that was that was fun. Hi, uh, are you did you ever go? No, yours was never really full time, right? Because you did a lot of photography and stuff. Right. At the peak, um, at the peak of my streaming when I was trying to get partnered because I, I was approached to asked if I wanted to be partnered um, oh. before I qualified. And I said, no, because I wanted to earn that at least. Um, and then I was like, all right, now I did it. Now partner me because you said you would before. Um, but I definitely don't want to uh, abuse Ben's power in the industry and on Twitch and stuff like that to get things that I normally wouldn't unless I work for them um, mm -hmm. or make sure that it's very clear that, you know, I'm getting special treatment for something because of who my husband is. Um, but at one point I was streaming four days a week and probably like three to four hours each time. So still part time, like 15 hours a week. Whatever the yeah. minimum was for you to qualify to get partner. Was there an hourly minimum? Uh, there was an hourly, like a certain amount of times and hours that you had to stream in a 30 day period. In order oh, for a road geez. to partner. So wait, did you get, were you an affiliate? Were you? I like was an affiliate. Yes. Oh. Very briefly. I never got to experience the affiliate thing because um it wasn't a thing yet for me so mine was only partner yeah. and there was of course really no clear outline except for you need to have 500 consistent viewers like that was still on the page even though that's not what they were looking for anymore no. and i applied 11 times i i got denied each time um and eventually somebody told me oh you can reply to the email and ask them what they're looking for from you and so I was like, what? <laughs> so I replied and they were like, oh, we need you consistently at like 125 to 150. And I was like, well, I'm right there because I was streaming uh, GTA 5 at the time mm -hmm. uh, and I was getting triple digits. And so eventually I was like, I'm going to apply again. And I got it the 12th time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was That's a lot though. Yep. And I never streamed GTA again after that. <laughs> There's so many people, though, that will play a certain game or something to get their foot in the door. And then after that, they're like, now I'm doing what I want to do. Screw everything else. Yeah, well, it's because where their viewership is. And honestly, GTA 5 was so toxic to me, oh, yeah. the community. But I was there because I I loved it in the beginning. And then it was just like, I'm here because of the viewership. And as soon as I cut it, like my viewership cut like 75 percent. I was like, oh, that's fine. I got what I wanted. Now let me rebuild. Yeah, <laughs> where I'll build I'm it back up. Kind yeah. Of, so yeah, I had to experience affiliate. Um, I only had to apply once and what's it like? <laughs> and then got it. And I totally, like I said, that that was the reason why, because I knew as soon as I applied, I was going to get it mm -hmm. uh, because I'm Mrs. Dr. Lupo. 
Yeah. Uh, and that and that was the biggest reason, though, why I wanted to make sure that my application was a legit application. I I made all of the marks that I was supposed to. So if anybody was going to come at me and be like, well, you need nee, 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 and I would just be like, look at my certificate that says I <laughs> you are wrong. I did do all the things that I needed to do. Um, that was that was a huge thing for me uh, and still isn't anything that I do. Yeah, I'm proud of you. I know that that, that takes a lot for somebody who can just get something but they want to earn it mm-hmm. and that's volumes of you and why i love you so much because <laughs> you're not just gonna take a take a handout you're gonna work for that right. and that's kind of awesome oh my goodness um gosh some of these questions are not for you uh <laughs> was the financial aspect really important to me uh yeah was it no <laughs> what about I mean, it's, but it, it's nice like in? It's it's nice to because right now, especially right now, I'm not streaming consistently like this. This is my streaming. Right. And I, and obviously, like I get subs and appreciate all that and everything. Um, and but Ben takes care of 95 percent of the income in our house now. It used to be the other way around. There was times where I was the, the breadwinner of the family with my photography and when I worked in corporate um, studios and stuff like that. And he was making measly dollars at PayPal. Uh, I was the one that was providing for us. Um, but now there's no way that I could ever catch up with him. Um, and, but it just, it feels good. So I guess, yes, the financial aspect was important to me, um, for my own pride as growing up as somebody that their parents were always entrepreneurs and doing their own thing and making their own money. Um, yeah. and running their own life. It was a very big deal for me to quit my business and work for Ben. And we didn't want to do the whole Ben hires me as an employee and pays me and, and stuff like that. Um, but so I just, I still wanted to be able to have some of my money somehow coming into the pool of our family. So I feel that. Yeah. I mean, and y'all heard my story. It was important to me. So I, I, was looking at it as potential financial gain, um, which <laughs> new baby streamer quickly learns. That's not how it works. <laughs> right. There was a there was a thing when Ben and I went to Twitch uh, in San Francisco. I wanted to say last year, but we didn't do anything last year. In 2019, we went to um, to Twitch in San Francisco. We just we were in San Francisco visiting my aunt, and we were like, "Oh, we're blocks away from Twitch. Let's just call up people until somebody answers and lets us in." <laughs> um, and so we called people, and they're like, "Oh no, no, we're in the other office." And and I'm like, "Okay, well, who can we call here?" And and we finally got in, and uh, we're able to do a tour of of the, the studios and stuff like that. Um, but we were talking to them and they're like, yeah, there's over a million accounts on Twitch. And the amount of partners was like 250,000 partners or something like that. Um, Is it that much? It's a lot of partners. Let's Google. How many partners? Yeah. How many partners to switch up? Or how many affiliates? Oh, no, it's only 27,000. 27,000. Okay. Oh, um... Maybe it was affiliates that you were I think there's the, like 3 million affiliates. 2.2 million uniquely, uh, mo- unique monthly broadcasters. Okay, so yeah, my number's way off. I was just throwing out numbers. No, you're fine. Um, But so 2.2 million monthly broadcasters. People that go live on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. 2.2 million. Jeez. Isn't that crazy? And that, okay, 150,000 affiliates as of 2018. Yeah, I think that it was up at a couple million. What is it for 2020 or 2021? Can we look at uh, that? There's, okay, so I guess in 2020, never mind. I guess it, maybe I'm thinking of like the unique people. It's 220,000 affiliates now. Yep. Roughly, give or take. Yeah, okay, yeah. Twitch has more, this is 2019, mm-hmm. more than 220,000 affiliate streamers. I don't know where we were going with that, but it, it just, just I don't it's, either. <laughs> it's crazy, though, to see that there's that many people and the amount of people that make it their full time job and actually are like making good money out of that mm-hmm. twenty seven thousand. It's minimal. It's less yeah. than one percent that are at like 
Ben's level in Tim's and Tyler's and stuff like that and Myth and Pokey and all that kind of stuff. There, it's less than one percent of the population of partners make it to the level that it's like nothing for them. Um, yeah. And I don't know many affiliates that are making a full, like a full career. I don't think I know any affiliates. Is that it? Are, are you? Is it possible? I mean, you're not I really. It could be, but if you're getting that much at that point, I feel like Twitch would partner you. Right. Because then it's more beneficial. Um, maybe that's why I don't know any affiliates that are getting like livable amounts of money. Because even where I'm at, my income is livable. It is sometimes paycheck to paycheck still. And I've been partnered for four years. Now, granted, it's, I also live in California and so and I'm providing for three other people. <laughs> yeah, it only costs a lot of money to live so in California. <laughs> I, by myself, maybe in like the Midwest, I'd be absolutely golden. But <laughs> that's not my living situation. <laughs> so a lot of my money goes down the drain because of where I live. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's just it's, it's crazy to think when we're talking about the financial aspect of it that I coming into the world of gaming and streaming and Twitch and stuff like that would not consider it to be a thing that you would do to make a financial amount of money. I will say whenever I did start to potentially want to make this my career path, as well as for income purposes, my husband was working a full time job with great pay. So I did not have to stress about how little little or how much I was making yet. Um, and it honestly wasn't until last year that I was as stable as I could be that I can now provide. Uh, and that says a lot. So I, w I would never recommend if you are your sole income going full time without already having like a good backing behind you. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's scary because every paycheck is super different. You could rape one month and then like the next month the generosity from your communities because that's really where a lot of it comes from um you're you're great and then you're like oh good i can pay off some debt and then the next month it hurts again and you're just like oh as soon so, as gifted subs came out um ben and i ignored gifted subs if they mean, came like we did not count them toward uh towards what our monthly income was we would keep track of how many gifted subs that Ben got each month. And then we would take that out of his paycheck and be like, this is our standard paycheck. Uh, because the the people that, you know, gift subs, they might gift you a hundred. I got gifted. I don't remember who did this, but years ago I got gifted a thousand subs um, over a whole entire day. And by one person. Right. Whoa. Holy crap. They... <laughs> It, the, and then the next month, nothing they did. No, but nobody came back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and it was when I was building uh, the Hogwarts castle. And I don't remember oh. who I cannot. Uh, was it Talisman? I don't remember. Uh, and I feel bad now that I don't. But um, they just kept coming in because they were trying to make me cry and, you know, be be silly and be happy. Um, and it was. It was so crazy to look at that and look at my sub number and look at that paycheck that came in. But then I have to remember that a thousand of those subs <laughs> did yeah. not count. And I, I'm afraid that sometimes people look at it and they're like, oh, my gosh, I got all these subs when like people do raids and stuff like that. And then everyone goes on a sub train and everything. But then you have to remember that like 75 percent of those aren't going to come back. And yeah. it's such an emotional roller coaster. Yes, it is. To... Yeah figure that talk out about, and oh, yeah I'm sure it's we talk hard about this to, later on but yeah, it's hard to like tell people that although one month is good your next month could be really bad yeah um and well and it also depends on your definition of good and bad but what I would say is good is where you can pay all of your bills and still have a bit left over for maybe eating out a couple times or when it's not a pandemic uh going somewhere go to like a cool museum or like a park or something that you can afford and it's just it's stressful and it's been even more stressful for most streamers 
who are not in that 1%, especially during the pandemic, because everybody's kind of suffering. And so your career is also kind of suffering because you do rely a lot of times on the generosity of people. Um, but sponsorships are also nice. <laughs> that helps a lot. I feel like, is there a section in here that we're going to talk about tips for, for, yeah. What's some small advice you give to new streamers? That's at the very towards the end. And we will, uh, we will load you full of all the things that we've learned over the past, what you're at almost seven years. Yeah. Well, no, I just said six years, six years. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and Ben is started in 2015. Um, oh, so yeah, but in the summer. Dang. And see, look at that y'all. I'm still like a kind of small streamer comparative <laughs> like and he's making it well way more than I am so that's another thing is it's it's difficult because you see your peers doing so much better in some circumstances and it makes you sometimes uh come onto yourself of like why am I not and that's a be an advice thing but don't do that <laughs> bad for your mental health because small growth is still growth and i have to tell people that all the time you said that uh destiny and gta were your first games that you Mm -hmm. streamed well yeah destiny for the most part i streamed that for a while and then i just i never got anywhere like with it in the community i just didn't feel part of it um unfortunately (laughs) it wasn't until after i finally streamed gta and then left gta and came back to the community that i started to feel more part of it so it was a I feel like certain communities are kind of like boys clubs a little bit. Yeah, Destiny was really a big boys clubs. Or if there were there were a few girls that were right. I'm not gonna name any names, of course, but there but were I a mean few not girls even saying that it was like club. that it's just boys, but you know, like the, the concept yeah. of a boys club where you know you have your letterman's jackets and stuff like that. I feel like that was the mm-hmm. Destiny community, whether you were male or female. Um mm-hmm. there were you know, there was a few girls that were that were in it too that were just like you, you were that you were the cool table. Yeah. You remember the cool kids table um, in Destiny, the clan, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, like there was even that going on. And where are those people now? I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it was gatekeeping because it really wasn't like they were really kind. It's just more so they just vibed with their certain group and it wasn't they didn't want to reach out as much. Right. Um, but Twitch was also very different back then very very different destiny community was still honestly doing the best at including people into the community oh yeah um and it's still one of the better communities a little toxic right now but it's fine uh (laughs) but yeah so it's just uh. um my first thing that i streamed was my photo editing really oh that's so almost exclusively photo editor streamer i would stream all my baby sessions and stuff like that People would just come hang out and I marketed myself to be the opposite of Ben. Um, Did you so, do that purposely? Like just because you didn't want to be? Uh, because we didn't want anybody to leave the Lupo family. Makes sense. If Ben is high energy, fast games, shooty shooty games, all that kind of stuff. And then you come to my stream and I'm playing The Sims and Boy and His Blob and Portal and yeah. editing baby photos with chill music in the background you didn't have to leave the Lupo family. And we marketed it ourselves that way purposefully so nobody would go watch anybody else. <laughs> and for the longest time, yeah. it worked. Like, you know, there's the there's the curtain with the Wizard of Oz pulled to the side <laughs> for you there, is that it was a marketing a marketing thing. And, uh, and going through and we were trying to... And, that's why I have my name as as I have my name. I didn't have any other name that I really wanted. And Ben's like, well, why don't you be uh, Mrs. Dr. Lupo? Because that's who you are. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's what people are already calling me. And uh, so tough. I just I just went with it. It was easy for people to remember. Um, people then would know instantly who I was. And that way, if they saw me in another directory, they would come in and it turned it. It worked perfectly. And I and, you know, marketing is kind of one of those things that I feel kind of um, kind of dirty taking advantage of. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah. it's, it's what it's what everything runs on market is marketing. Marketing is one of the smartest things that you can learn in any 
area of your of your life or any job that you do. And it was definitely a, a thing that we sat down and like made this plan of this will be your name and you already like chill games and stuff like that. And then we'll occasionally stream together so people know. And then now nobody has to leave our family and we get all the money <laughs> all this kind of stuff. So it works, right? Totally works. <sighs> Gosh, it's sneaky. There's there's like so much you learn along the way of your journey um, through streaming. And it's always hard to give advice because every person's different. Like advice that I give you may not apply to you properly and vice versa. Um, and so when people ask for advice, I'm like, ooh. Well, what are you trying to stream? Yeah. What <laughs> like, is what's your goal? <laughs> so I try to not give out too much advice because I don't want it to be bad advice. Right. <laughs> I, I'm only well versed in what I need um, and what works for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I can only do a little bit. But oh gosh, that's always fun. Well, do you do you actually remember the first time that you got like a donation? or a sub um I don't honestly because people would just come over from Ben's stream he would be streaming next to me and then I would be streaming and he'd be like oh wife that's a cute picture everyone go over to her channel and then people would just flood it kind of like they do now when I, I haven't even messaged <laughs> Ben yet to be like hey I'm live because he always forgets um and so it, I I don't honestly and that kind of Makes me sad a little bit that I don't have the typical milestones. Um, mm. And even when I was was streaming, it was honestly to keep my my attention focused because I wouldn't just then accidentally sit there on YouTube for 45 minutes watching videos instead of <laughs> editing my photos. And so like it purposefully made me focus on my work and get my work done faster. My turnover oh, rate funny. when I was streaming my sessions um was cut in half instead of two weeks it was one week and because I had three hours where I couldn't do anything else other than work and Aww. it was nice it definitely helped out a lot and my like my clients I would tell them I'd be like hey I have your permission to edit your photos online you can come see them and almost all of them are like yes let's do that and I would send them a That's text cool. I'm like hey I'm live come watch little Susie's photos be edited from her newborn session and the parents would they most of them would not make accounts um, and they uh, would just text me or email me and be like, oh, my gosh, this is so cute. Or I'd be like, hey, if mom, if you're in here, can you shoot me a text and let me know, do you like this pose or this pose? And then like oh. two minutes later, that would get and they'd be like, I like the first pose. I'm like, perfect. Like it was it was <laughs> real time thing. And nobody else in the photography community was doing that in our area or even in general. I don't know if anybody else was ever doing that. And so it was a whole thing that I was able to add on to the experience. Get, get I know that like if I was a client, I would love that too, to be able to see myself. Well, I mean, I guess it's the same with emote artists. I love seeing my emote artists live and watching them make my emotes. I'm just like, oh, this is so cool. Look right. at their brain working. Wow. How did they get like my thoughts into their thoughts onto paper? Well, <laughs> digital art. I was just like, this is awesome. And you get to give feedback live, you know, just in case so that they don't have to send you everything. And then mm -hmm. like, what would you like change? And I'm like, wait, can you change that now? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's actually really smart. Dang. I wonder if there's a lot of people doing that now though. When Did I you got ever the, feel like, oh, sorry. When Go I ahead. got the music made for my channel from my brother-in-law, Aaron, he had me on his stream and we sat there together and listened to it. And I gave him feedback and he edited it on uh, on stream and then I left and then he finished it and then sent it to me at the end of the night uh, mm -hmm. and I think it's a super beneficial thing um, for sure someone said but there's also a bunch of privacy issues for your photos being shared to a bunch of random people that you may or may not want to see but it's good to get it cleared for sure I legally have to get it uh, cleared for sure I have to yeah. have the, the parents um, I usually send them an email or a text and then it never never verbally it always was hey you know, this is this is what I'm going to do. Are you interested or are you OK with that for a learning purpose? And most of them said yes. And if they didn't, they didn't. I never did boudoir sessions um, online because that's obviously something yeah. that's very private. Um, so, yeah. Dang. 
Uh, did you did you feel like you were initially kind of stuck in the photography editing community? Like, what made you branch out to play games? Um, I didn't think that I was good enough to play games, so that's why I, I just, you know, I I grew up playing games, but you know, like Super Mario World and Mario Kart and Sims, and then pretty much nothing for the longest time until college. So I like I didn't play a ton of video games in my you know late oh, yeah. preteen, you know, throughout high school and stuff like that. Um, so it. It was definitely hard for me to have the confidence to play a game, knowing that I'm probably going to be really bad at it and having to deal with backseat gaming and stuff like that. Um, oh, always a joy. Right. And most of the time I would just be like, guys, stop. I don't I don't want to know. I don't yeah. care if I missed that secret platform that I was supposed to jump onto so that I can get whatever to get to the end of the level. I don't care. I will figure it out. On my own. I feel um, bad. But uh, since I started with that, I felt like that's all people wanted to see because they they were watching gaming on Ben's channel. And I didn't think that people wanted to see, you know, cutesy games and stuff like that, because Ben doesn't yeah. play cutesy games. <laughs> I feel I feel you on that aspect. Um, whenever I started transitioning from, you know, FPS and shooters and things like that, because that's what I streamed. Um I remember switching to an MMO for the first time. I was playing Blade and Soul and I did poorly like viewership wise and everything. Like it was just so bad and it really like hit me in the gut. I was like, oh no, can I not play games that I like? Like, do I, do I have to cater to this in order to thrive? And that's what got me stuck in GTA for so long because I was not thriving anywhere else. And then eventually I just, well, once I got partnered, <laughs> I I did kind of just switch the note and I was like, I want to play cozy games. And that's what I'm more marketed toward now because I'm family friendly mm -hmm. and playing shooters and being family friendly, although it's not difficult for me, but it's hard to explain it sometimes um, when like GTA 5, I would play with no game audio. I would play music because, you know, there's a lot of cussing in <laughs> it. Uh, I wouldn't play the story. It was always multiplayer because then you're not missing too much dialogue. But it it was it was difficult to maneuver that. And then I found like I'm just so much more comfortable here. I like designing. I like creativity. And I I liked the community that came with cozier, comfier games because mm -hmm. they're just they're there to chill. Like and it's it became more of like uh, an actual community and not a competition in order to play with the streamer kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was nice and it just felt wholesome. I didn't feel anxious to give them the most thrilling headshots and cool moves and stuff like that. I was like, Oh, you want to see me build a house? Cool. Let's do you like a house. picture here or here. <laughs> here yeah. Or here. Like, what does this look like? And there's a whole other side of Twitch outside of like FBO shooters, fast games. And it's just, it's cozy. <laughs> Cause I know that me as a viewer, I'm not going into any stream except for comfy ones. And so I was like, wow, why am I not catering to that then? Like, yeah, that's what I am. And it was that turnaround that started to actually make me enjoy streaming more. And it cultivated a better community for me with less toxicity. So that, that was a, my way of getting out <laughs> your is community boring. is the family right yeah the family because it's like a little family and i'm sam family you've taken you've taken all the good sam puns by the way <laughs> Have I? i'm sorry <laughs> um everyone's like what's our community name I'm like the people that watch mrs dr lupo like <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Republic of China. The people that watch Mrs. Dr. Lupo. The, the Republic of Mrs. Dr. Lupo. <laughs> like, I don't know. And when we started this and everyone's like, what's our community name? And we came up with the magic beans and stuff like that. Um, even yep. then, I'm just like, do we really need one? But I know that some people really resonate with that. And I know that your community is one of those communities that they like. They are loud and proud family members. And I think that's that's so cool. Um do you, did you go in wanting to create a community? Like, was that one of your goals? Yeah. So initially, whenever I started, um, I didn't understand like community stuff yet. There really wasn't, at least from what I was seeing, too much of that. But the first streamers that I did watch, the ones that were playing The Sims, 
uh, I'm not going to say what their community name was in anything, but uh, they had a community name and it came down to the point of where they were like, oh, go post a selfie like of you eating a grape with us. And like, you know, you do that on Twitter and she's like, it got everybody involved and it felt like a tight knit community. And so whenever I, I didn't have that and I was like, I want that so bad, but I can't in this game and or with what I'm doing now. And eventually I was like, no. I want this. Like, I want to cultivate a community that is just kind, that is calm, little chaotic good, and that I feel comfortable in and that others feel comfortable in without, you know, having to try hard. Um, And so that's how the family was born. And I love the name of our community so much. It blesses my whole soul anytime I see anybody <laughs> post outside of like the stream they're like I love the family I'm just like <laughs> yes <laughs> me too <laughs> even Ben doesn't yeah. have a community name and people have been bugging him for years to come up with one and they Does keep trying to like name themselves and he's just like I don't want that like but he he appreciates the the community aspect like so it's just the Dr. Lupo community and he kind of just likes that that that's how it is and our discord is fairly active and stuff like that um i remember the first time when we started a discord and i don't know if you have the Ooh. same kind of memory too but it, when everyone was typing and we were all so excited that we had a discord and it was like a big thing and then all of a sudden it popped and it said several people are typing we were like several people are typing <laughs> So oh my gosh funny. there's like there's more than four people in here at the same time <laughs> yeah i remember trying to grow my discord and i was like nobody wants to come in here and talk and i don't know what happened but it just started happening where people felt comfortable and now the discord would be popping uh and i'm like yes <laughs> it's always fun whenever i have a moment to sit there and read and then just scroll through and i'm like oh yeah. <laughs> like all these friends where i see them in voice channels like that i don't have to be a part of they just want to play games together the most wholesome thing oh yeah it, oh gosh it makes my heart so happy to see the family like being friends outside of like needing me in the middle because that that means that they're comfortable i think that's right. so nice it's yeah. so uh I used to be able to go through and skim through Ben's Discord and have all the little notifications gone. And then, you know, it would be like 10 minutes before they would start appearing again kind of thing now. No, not mm -hmm. at all. We have so many sub channels for different things. And, yeah, <laughs> and everyone just has like their own little area. And it was just it was just so nice. And now I just don't have time to sit and read through Discord or participate. And I'm kind of yeah. such a passive member in there um and yeah there's always there's the joke that wednesdays when ben is off stream everybody would just go into discord and all just hang out in discord during the day because they didn't have ben to watch to hang out and chat so it became people's yeah. new you know thing to to go in on wednesdays and and hang out there and it was chaotic and ben and i would go in there and hang out with everybody but now <laughs> it's just it's a lot just, too much <laughs> yeah that was me too whenever i do see some people in voice chats uh if i have the time i'll pop in and be like hello like for a bit and just talk and then i i have to dip when i have to dip but it's yeah. good to see people in the community you've cultivated enjoying one another because you know there's a mutual relatability there and i think that that's ah uh, it's so fun i love it we love y'all community members Yay! Thank you. Okay. Uh, when you, so you played Sims. Once you moved over to, to mm -hmm. Cozy Games, you played Sims pretty much exclusively, right? Yeah. That was Did like you have my a hard mom. time getting in or getting out of that community? No, I don't think so. Um, well, it depends on what you mean by the community. Viewership wise, the viewers that all came in were always just so cool. Like they were so kind and they enjoyed the fact that I get so focused that I, I forget that I'm streaming. Yeah. <laughs> They're just there quiet. to enjoy like the little bit of clicking and music in the background and watching yep. me turn my cogwheels <laughs> as I get creative. And I still do that with most games. Um, but when it came to like the actual like sim streamer community, I never felt included up until maybe last year maybe the beginning of last year um 
I still don't feel super a part of it, but I do know a lot of simmers now, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. So I've never really felt a part of a community, like a directory itself, which is, I guess, why I rely heavily on my community um, for comfort, because I am variety and variety is difficult to become not so much known in, but uh, for people to be like, oh, yeah, Sam, the Sim streamer. But it's just like, oh, yeah, Sam, the Sims, Minecraft, Stardew, Phasmophobia, Among Us, uh, uh, Destiny. Uh, what else is there? D&D. Uh, D&D uh, <laughs> streamer. So I just want to be known as Sam with the family at this point. Because <laughs> constantly wanting to fit in with a directory became so toxic to me personally. And it's not that they weren't being inclusive. It's more so I wasn't there enough for them to realize I was there. (laughs) Yeah. And you can't just like, you can't show up to a party, right? And stand in the corner and expect everybody to know that you're there. You need to reach out and introduce yourself to people and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. You can't expect a community to open their arms to you when you are not making the effort to ask them to notice that you're there. Oh, no, I made efforts. Don't don't get me twisted on that. <laughs> I made up, <laughs> but <laughs> so like it's like a few people knew, but um, yeah, it just became difficult. But I am variety, so I hop around. Mm-hmm. So I no longer can or do expect that kind of thing. I just try to love on the people in the community that I am currently streaming in, um, and eventually make friends along the way. <laughs> Wait, how did you find me? What game was I streaming? Uh, I knew you from the Destiny community. Did you? Mm -hmm. I I I knew you you from uh, when we met in Guardian Con. So I knew I knew you connected through Destiny. Gotcha. Whenever we were at the the grotto, the grotto, I was like, what is it called? (laughs) But did we say that we had met before that? Um, I believe that you told me that you knew me a little bit before that from my streams, but you didn't know that was me. The yeah crowd. there we go so yeah, yeah. I, I knew you from destiny and then probably playing some other games and stuff like that but that's how i knew who you were is yeah from playing destiny okay that makes sense yeah and then i met you at the yeah. grotto uh you shifty eyed me i'll never forget it <laughs> sorry there were so many people that weekend <laughs> there were they were and ben was like popping yeah so, <laughs> it was it oh gosh i can't imagine <sighs> <laughs> so we talked a little bit about you know gaming in our in our communities and stuff like that um what about outside of stream how what is like the big thing that's important for you to balance your work and home and family and friends and stuff like that um i will say in the last year i've been very poor at it uh because i th- th- there's a lot <laughs> going on for me uh, but previous to that, I, I've always had a really strict schedule because I want to make sure that there's time for family. Um, so like even then in the beginning, I would start streaming at 7 30 PM. I used to be a night streamer, um, every night. Well, you know, unless issues arose with life or something, cause he would be in bed. So I would take care of him, put him in bed, you know, nurture him and love on him and educate him throughout the day, do normal mom stuff. And he'd go to sleep. And then I would start my streaming. Um, and then I would stream roughly until like 11 PM. And we would do that. I probably did that for about a year. Um, and then progressively, like I was able to shift maybe a little bit, but I was always a night streamer up until about two years ago. I shifted to morning because I was like, you know what? Why don't I work with life school schedule? And then I was doing like my two streams a day. So I'd bring life to school in the morning. I'd come home and stream for about four hours and then I'd go pick him up. We would do, you know, homework, playtime, uh, dinner, bath, bedtime. And then I would stream again at my normal 730. But that's because I had it in my head that I wanted to transition from nighttime to strictly morning so that I could have that. Um, and then eventually my brother moved in with me and I was like, oh, perfect. I don't have to get Leif after school because now he can do that. So I can stream like a little bit longer and then end and help him with everything else. Um, so it's been 
always focused around making sure I have time specifically for my son. I always have time for, you know, my husband um, because his work went really, really late. And so whenever I stopped night streams, as soon as he got home, then we had time together. But the the daytime and the bedtime was always really important to me. Um, and even now it's really important to me. So I try to schedule like all meetings and everything to end at like 6 p.m. So that I can dinner and bath and bedtime for my son. So it's a it, it's a constant like changing journey um, with balancing home life. But that's kind of where I'm at. What about you? I when Ben started streaming, so he was just a night streamer as well to start off mm-hmm. with. Uh, mm-hmm. And he started streaming right before I found out I was pregnant. And so it would just be on the weekends, so just Saturdays and Sundays. And and because they would do trial runs on the weekends. And then he'd stream for like maybe a couple times in the evening. And then slowly but surely just got to be every evening because that's when I would do most of my editing. And we've always been like the couple that does our own thing in the evenings, but is like near each other. So okay, um, it was never a big deal. Like we honestly don't like you know putting charlie to bed and then just sitting and watching tv or whatever every single night like it just doesn't work for us so we definitely take our our time apart a lot um and so it just he just started then charlie was born and he would go once charlie would go to bed so again he would do 7 30 to 10 30 and okay. um and then we would be in bed by 11 15 and then he would stream sometimes on Fridays and then he would stream on the weekends for a little bit here and there. But it wasn't until he went full time that we we were like a schedule needs to be made ASAP, like right away. And if it needs to be changed, it's something that we can talk to each other about. But we can't go outside of this schedule because this is what's going to make us sane basically. Yeah. And so that was the biggest thing for us. Um, but when I started streaming, my, my stream schedule is never consistent. Doing magic word with you is the most consistent I've ever been with streaming at the same time <laughs> on the same day, because it's, it's just a side thing for me. So I, there would be times where I would stream. I had a schedule. It was like Tuesday nights and Friday nights and stuff like that. And I would get there in Friday night, 15 minutes before I was supposed to go live. And I was like, I'm tired. He's out. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Maybe I'll try tomorrow. I don't care kind of thing. So it definitely it makes me like sound like I don't appreciate the people that watch me. But for mm-hmm. me. I'm always been more about my balance in my work and life and my balance with my mental health as well. It's always been one of the most important things for me ever since I was in high school when I had a few years of just I took care of everybody else for many years and forgot to take care of myself and put myself in a position that I wasn't able to take care of myself anymore. And mm-hmm. uh, and I never want to go back in that that mind space or that position ever again so i will actively be like hey sorry guys i'm not feeling it today you're not gonna get a good stream so i'm not gonna give it to you and if anybody's mad well there's plenty of other people to (laughs) to watch so i think that because this not my job um i can take more of like a passive view on that but as someone that it's their job um how do you feel like when you're just not feeling stream days do you take days off do you or do you push through it um i usually push through it it's a toxic trait i have um because i constantly am reminded i need to stream for my family and i want to take care of my family So a lot of times I push through moments when I should be offline and I can turn it on. You know, it's just like, hey, guys, I'm here to stream, Uh, even though I'm feeling like dirt on the inside. And it's it's honestly why I probably am where I am now mentally. Um, I have been very depressed 
And there are moments where I'm just like, dang, only way I'm getting off stream is if y'all pay me to get off stream. Because <laughs> I'm here to work. <laughs> and, but I, I have been feeling better. Like I've actually been enjoying streams recently again. So it's hard. Um, whenever I end stream, I have, I have all social medias turned off. I have zero notifications. You know this because I need to disconnect as soon as I can. I've felt like a really bad community leader, honestly, for like the past three years because of that. Like I can't always be in the discord talking as much as I desire to. I know that if I don't peel away from social media and stuff, I get sucked in and I lose valuable time for myself. I lose valuable time for my family. Um, I am very strict on my sleep schedule. I have grandma sleep schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go to bed at 730. If you need me after that, no, you don't. So, <laughs> uh, you can wait. <laughs> And like, I'll put on the little like moon, the do not disturb on my phone. So I'm like, uh-uh, I'm checked out. <laughs> but that's why I'm super grateful to, you know, the community leaders that I have, like my moderators and those who are so into the community who constantly, you know, keep things going for this family. And no matter how much I think them, I can never think them enough because I don't know if they realize that they're taking care of me by taking care of the community. Um, and it means the world, the absolute world, because I feel like for the first time in the last six years, um, in like the last two months, I'm finally taking care of myself because I know that things will be okay. Um, and I take nightly baths. I do a bath check-in on Instagram. I'll let you, you know. do? <laughs> yep. Bath check-in. I can't wait to have a big bath one day. <laughs> uh, that's going to be... Are you going to do bath check-ins with me? He likes uh, that yes. bath time. One it's got to be like the just the eyeballs and a little yep. piece of it. I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> but with your, with your Discord, I hope you realize that like people mm -hmm. may initially come for you to join the Discord, but you've created such a community that your whole community is you just bits and pieces of you yeah oh and, and, and it, that excites me because you know i i want to cultivate a community like i said with relatability where we all kind of have the same interests and um i love that since i've been so open about my mental health on stream my community has been comfortable with sharing you know their moments of difficulty that they're going through and seeing like family members lean on our stronger family members at the time and who were there to be like, hey, if you need a friend, I'm here. And I'm just like, oh, that's so wholesome and I want to kiss you all. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been working on being better about it <laughs> to take care of me. <laughs> but I just don't have a lot of the time and it's figuring out that process of having time just for me because right now it's really just my bath <laughs> yeah and that I, always, is <laughs> I always remind myself of the, the silly cliche you can't fill up others cups unless yours is full first yeah and charlie even charlie recently he's been a little selfish with um and i totally get it because you know he's a kid stuck in a house full of adults with nobody yeah. to play with um but he has been a little selfish with having somebody to play with him at all times. And I was going on a run with Aiko and I told him that when I came back that we would go on a scooter ride as soon as I came back. But he's like, I want to go on a scooter ride first. And he got super mad that I was going on a run without him. And Ben was trying to explain to him that sometimes mommies and daddies and even kids just need some time by themselves. And I, and I used the whole cup experience uh, with him. I went and grabbed three cups and I filled mine up with water and I filled uh, or I handed him one and I handed Ben one. And we physically showed him the whole idea that I filled up their water. And then I was like, all right, Charlie, drink your water. And he drank his water. And I was like, do you need more water? He's like, yeah, I'm really thirsty. I'm like, mine's empty. I can't help you. And he's like, well, how do you fill your water up? And I was like, I need to go spend some time alone and do something that makes me feel good so I can fill my water up. And he was like, oh, 
And to- like it totally clicked, like actually pouring the water in the cups. And then he's like, I'm so I'm sorry. And he apologized and all that kind of stuff. Um, so hopefully that sticks. But that's yeah, I think the biggest thing with streaming is that everyone feels like they have to always be available. And it's such a hard thing being available online on Twitter and in Instagram, and being on all the platforms and showing every aspect of your life. And it just sucks sometimes. Yeah. And so like I, I very much uh, I need my water cup full. Don't talk to me until my water cup is full unless like you are desperate for water. Otherwise, you know, yeah. I can't help you. And and my family and friends, thankfully, understand that. And they, you know, they let me do my thing. Ben tries as hard as he can to let me go work out on un- uninterrupted for 30 minutes. Because um, if I wanted to get up before Charlie, I had to get up at like 630 in the morning. No way in hell am I doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> um, yeah, you go to bed so late. I. <laughs> That's not enough sleep. <laughs> I go to bed at 11 and I wake up. At yeah. Whew. Uh, seven to eight. I, my yeah. body naturally wakes up at eight, but recently I've been waking up a little earlier and it makes me really happy Ooh. that I'm training my body a little bit at a time because this weekend, tomorrow, do you know what tomorrow is? Daylight savings. Wait, I thought that was in two days. Isn't it Saturday night into Sunday? Well, technically Sunday morning. <laughs> At like 2 a.m. <laughs> I think I could be face. wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's technically Sunday. <laughs> there will be a new host next week. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when you when you are sleeping on a Saturday evening, does it stop at midnight or do you continue sleeping into Sunday? I wake up right at 2 a.m., Sam. What do you mean? And then you change your clocks. <laughs> yep, exactly that. <laughs> I'm done with you. OK, what was the greatest? What's what was the greatest moment of your streaming career so far? Something really cool that happened to you. NASA. That was so cool. That was so cool. Getting to do a co-hosting thing with Ben for, for NASA for their, what was it, 50th? Yep. Anniversary? Of the yeah. moon landing. Moonshot! Yeah. That was the coolest thing. And then, uh, gosh, there's a lot of cool things that I'm so grateful for. I don't know, hosting for anything I've gotten to host for. I have a freaking show. April 7th, Game on Titans. I'll be there. <laughs> Watch my Amazon Prime. Prime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the co-host and co-judge. <laughs> so, I mean, that there, uh, well, I think one of the like earliest, coolest things that happened to me was honestly, after I was in a car wreck uh, and I was still streaming on the floor and one of my community members bought me a chair to get me off the floor because they knew that I was now like my, my shoulder has been messed up since. And they were like, no, let me take care of you. Like, you, you do so much for us. Let me do that for you. And that, as simple as it looks like now, comparatively to, like, everything I've done, that was so nice. Like, and, ugh, gosh, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Like that, that, was, that was the moment. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I think my That's first cool. big moment of, like, wow, this is cool. People know who, who Ben is and who I mm-hmm. am even was uh, Ninja's event in Vegas when Ben casted for the first time. And it's still like one of my favorite pictures of the two of us ever at that event. And it was cool. I knew nobody there. Um, I met Jess for the first time, but she was also hosting on the on the floor. So I wasn't able to hang out with her. Um, But I got to meet like uh, Smix and I met Ava there. I met um, Kat Conti there and Pods of War and they just like they didn't really know each other very much either but they all just kind of sectioned together at my little table and we became friends and and it's so it's so cool to see and it's hard I forget this all the time that Ava was one of the first people that brought me into 
the streaming world as like a, a friend and was like nice to me. And I wasn't just like Ben's wife and stuff like that. Because at the beginning, there was a lot of thirsty girls. It's a lot of thirsty girls. And, uh, <laughs> and because I wasn't around all the time, I didn't have an account. So I just talked on Ben's like I would go over to Ben's computer when he was on the floor and mm-hmm. I would type and, I, and then I'd put dash wife or something like that afterwards. So people knew that it was me typing. And then eventually Aww. everyone's like, why don't you just get your own? Uh, but it was probably like six True. months of me doing that. And so most of them, most of Ben's viewers had no clue that I existed. Uh, no clue that Charlie existed and that's a T yeah it was a lot of so I I didn't trust a single girl in the community initially maybe that's why you shifty eyed me because one you didn't know who I I was yeah I don't know because it's just I felt like if I if I stayed in the background it Mm -hmm. was never going to stop yeah that makes sense and honestly, I've seen a lot of wives like become more prevalent and at least on Twitter, um, yeah. which I think is really important because like they exist and they are important to your favorite streamer. So wh- why don't disrespect them? Yeah. And it's just like yeah. there would be so many times that that a girl would make comments and stuff like that. And people would be like, he's married. And they would respond. Well, I don't see her around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, that's my favorite. When people are like, hey, you going on a date with me? I'm just like, you gotta ask my husband. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask him. <laughs> Maybe he'll it, say it just, yes. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was definitely like, I don't mind. I don't care if, if girls flirt with Ben or whatever. Like, you know, and he's All a right, flirty, back flirting. <laughs> he's yeah. a flirty character. So <laughs> he'll make, you know, sarcastic comments and everything back. And that's totally fine. But in and so many people uh, are like, are you OK with Ben having friends that are streamers that are girls and stuff like that? And I'm like, I'm fine as long as they recognize and accept that I'm here and, you know, make an effort to mm-hmm. know who I am or even just like introduce themselves. <laughs> be they better recognize <laughs> that Ben would play with some girls and I they they wouldn't follow me like on social media. I would go into their chats because I would always try, you know, because if like, you know, if you're going to be a friend of my husband, you got to know who I am. And I would go on their chats mm-hmm. and like tag them and say hi and everything. They would ignore me and all this kind of stuff. And it just got to the point that I was like, these are the requirements that in, in Ben, you know, kind of naturally makes those things happen mm-hmm. is that uh, he talks about me enough. Obviously, it's well known now that Ben's married to me and that's what? What? You're married to Dr. Lupo? The, this Dr. Lupo in the magazine with uh, that really cool picture, that handsome man, Dr. Lupo? He's so cute. That picture is so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a thing where I had to lay down the boundaries, basically, because, you know, otherwise I was just going to get trampled over. And so the, going to that ninja event, I'm so grateful that he asked Ben because Ben had never casted before. Mm-hmm. Um, their other caster, I think it was supposed to be Golden Boy. He uh, last minute couldn't do it. And so Tyler's like, I need somebody ASAP. The Oh, let's go with <laughs> let's go with Ben. Um, and so it was like a super last minute thing. And uh, that was like the turning point for me. And then I think we went to Guardian Con. Go to Guardian Con before the year that the Ninja had a meet and greet together. Yeah, I remember that. Mega because the first time we went, like some people knew who we were and stuff like that. But each time we go to GCX or Guardian Con now, um, Guardian Con now GCX. Yeah, yes, Guardian Con now GCX. I should know. (laughs) Daylight savings at two a.m. on Sunday. Ben's a part owner. I should know that (laughs) what the name of the thing is, Um, but. It uh, it's cool now to just have that build up and everyone's just like, oh, my gosh, Dr. Lupo and Sam. And I'm like, and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I had a when, do you remember the first time someone's asked you to sign something or take a picture with you? Yes, it was. I don't remember which meet and greet I had. 
and honestly having a meet and greet was really weird yeah uh i think it actually might have been with the dbh yeah it was it was so strange uh they gave me their badge and they're like Were you, would you sign this and i'm like why I'm not, I'm nobody. <laughs> what do you, hello? I still feel that way. Like, even now, anytime somebody, like, even wants a picture, um, it's very really flattering because it, it a little bit solidifies in, like, what you've been doing for so long. And she's like, you are somebody to someone. And it's like, wow, that's cool. But I never want it to get into my head. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I... And I feel like that's what I love about you and Ben is that no matter how like literally famous he is, y'all are so humble and you're always so chill and you're willing to talk to anybody and everybody, you know, of course, security permitting. Um, But I think that that's really important because fame can get to people, even in the Shumerverse, we've seen it. Yeah. And I don't want to be that way. So anytime someone even says my name, I'm like, what? (laughs) We always tell everybody that um, we are Sam and Ben Lupo first, and Doctor Lupo, Mrs. Doctor Lupo second. Those those names are our jobs. Um, and when but when we are at like meet and greets and stuff like that, I still want to talk to you like I'm Sam, not like I'm Mrs. Doctor. Yeah. And that's been a huge thing that Ben will listen to anybody at a meet and greet talk. He's been he notorious. Will. For uh, taking a really long time with like the first three fourths of the people that are in the line. And then I have to be the the crappy manager that is like, we have to go. We have 10 minutes and you have 40 people in line like, you know, and you're right now currently. And it's and it's like the first maybe 20 to 40 people or so they get a good solid minute of his time. And then uh-huh. then I have to be like, all right, we have this many people. You have this much time. I need you to go down to like 45 seconds kind of thing. Talk as you're signing. 10 minutes later, I come back and I'm like, all right, we have 10 minutes left. You have this. And then at the very end, he refuses to leave anybody behind. So he will do a selfie line. Um, yeah, like, I remember seeing that. Yeah, everybody get out your cameras and, you know, I'll just run down and take a picture. If you have something you can have me to sign, hold on to it till the very end. And as I'm walking away, I will sign stuff for you kind of thing. And he just hates to turn anybody down. Um mm-hmm. And I and I like that about him. I like that he, uh, he is still Ben. Doctor Lupo is is the cocky character, right? Like, there's times where you've heard Ben say this, where they're he's like, "Do they not know who I am?" <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And that's not Ben talking. That's the Doctor Lupo character uh, yeah. talking. And but because oh I know, so chill. he's so chill. Like outside of Doctor Lupo, he's just a down to earth guy. Yeah. Look at us. We're just talking about Ben here. Let's just talk about how cool my husband is. (laughs) Um, But with the first time that someone asked me to sign something was at GuardianCon. Now GCX. (laughs) I did it right. Um, And they they had Ben sign something. And I was just kind of standing off to the side. And they're like, hey, can you sign this too? And I froze. Froze. And I'm like, what do I write? Do I I write Sam? (laughs) Do I write Mrs. Dr. Lupo? Yeah. How do you write Mrs. Dr. Lupo all in one? (laughs) And so it was the most janky signature that I have ever seen in my life. I misspelled it, I'm pretty sure, and like tried to go back and change it and stuff like that. And I handed it to them and I was like, you are the first person. You are the only one that will ever have this because as soon as you walk away, I am practicing on this piece of paper <laughs> until I can figure it out. Oh, and yeah. even then the person after that obviously heard that. And so they're like, can you sign this too? And then can you sign this too? And then can you sign this too? And by the time that meet and greet was over with, I had my signature and it was it was good to go. Yeah. Uh, Dak asked me to sign his badge at TwitchCon. <laughs> yeah, I'm not about it. I don't want to hear it. It's fine. Whatever. I didn't know. <laughs> It's all good. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but it was just a, such a weird solidifying experience of like people care. Yeah. Right. It's so surreal um, because you, you know who you are. Like I, I still go to the grocery store. I buy my own groceries. I clean my own house. I uh, got a, I don't know. I just, I'm, 
just Sam. Yeah. I'm very much a normal person. Um, and I hope that if I ever do like get to Ben's level, that I will still be just Sam. Um, Cause I think that that's been important to see someone like Ben and you in the industry that regardless of how well-known y'all get, you're still the same people you really were five years ago. Um, and it's unique. It's really unique to this industry. And I think that, you know, if we were to give a little bit of advice, stay true to who you are uh, and don't, don't let things get to your head because sometimes people don't want to work with you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, I'll say with our last little bit of time, I know we had a, quite a few questions in chat. Yeah, we so, can stop others that we had. We yeah, I would say let's, let's talk about a couple more questions. So if you guys want to start popping your questions in chat, well, we will go yeah. through and uh, answer them here in a few minutes. Um, obviously, have you made friends through streaming? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm yeah, I've made a lot. i made a lot of friends. It, it, oh my gosh, it's so fun going to conventions and just seeing your best friends and then Join hanging you. out with them all the time. Yeah, like uh, Noah, Josh, if you out there, I'm so excited to see y'all at a convention again. Or just, The three of you guys yeah. at conventions is like, you know, the team. <laughs> yeah, it's like whenever I don't have you, like my Sam Sam partner, <laughs> then I have like my Noah Josh partner. <laughs> like I, then you you find your group that you do conventions with and it's just the best. And then you even like people in person for the first time, you're like, oh, you have legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, your body doesn't just stop right at your chest. <laughs> um, do you feel like when you're at conventions, you would rather be in a large group of people hanging out or just like one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I do enjoy both, but as the extrovert in me, I want to be around so many people. Like, I love big groups. I love when everybody's chattering and bantering and like seeing people for the first time or getting to know each other or introductions. I'm like, yes, I thrive off of that. That fills my cup. Which is why it's been really empty. Which is <laughs> <laughs> why this year is just yeah, sucked. Oh what about you? I'm assuming you would prefer smaller. Opposite, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. if I went to a convention, I would be totally happy just walking around with Ben and me or just walking around with you and me and then not talking to anybody. <laughs> yeah, I do enjoy those moments, though, I'll say. Whenever it's just me and you, and I'm like, no, stay away. This is our shield. Yeah. <laughs> this is Sam Sam time. We should bring yeah. umbrellas next time. So and we'll be like, we're cosplaying people that don't want to talk to you. <laughs> we're like face veils. Yes. <laughs> All over uh, each other. Oh, man. What is a goal before we start taking questions in chat? What is a goal that you have for this coming year with it comes to streaming? I mean, I want to blow up. Not physically. <laughs> like, I, I, I want to be bigger than what I am now in the sense that I, I, I want more opportunities to do good. Like I, I, I envy that with what Ben does, especially with like St. Jude and everything. I want to be able to do more charity wise, but also know that I'm super taken care of. Um, because unfortunately, a lot of times whenever you do do charity stuff, it takes away from your personal income. And that's a struggle right now for me. Yeah. So I would love to be able to like be so comfortable that all I want to like all that I need to do is do good. I just want to do good. So I don't know. Maybe Game one day. Good. It'll find its way. I think I just want to be capable of streaming consistently. <laughs> I hope so. I'm so excited for you to stream more. <laughs> it's happening soon, everybody. It's happening soon. I can't tell you when or why, but it's happening soon. <sighs> so excited <laughs> my goal is to eventually make it like i said to three days a week but i think i'll just start with one other day outside of magic word it's gonna be so good see. also uh we have a very long question yeah that that one's a good question so oh shall we let's do uh, it all right mother pupper asks or well states and asks uh, as women on Twitch, how do you deal with viewers who would come across boundaries or make you and or others uncomfortable? Multiple DMs and tags on various apps, asking to video chat for a coffee, empty advice requests while being 
supportive by subbing, etc. I mod for a small channel, and we've experienced this several times, and end up tiptoeing in fear of negative backlash online, or them making alts and continuing inappropriate behavior. How do you stop it before it starts? Well, first Just off, because pain, they give you money, they don't owe you anything. Or you don't yeah, owe them anything. Yeah, uh, against the rules, so like, just report them and yeah, <laughs> they get out of there. Yeah, the but invasion what's can get them permanently banned from Twitch. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on your um, statement? Um, just because somebody gives you money in this situation does not mean that you owe them anything outside of what you are comfortable with. So if somebody <laughs> tips you 50 bucks and was like, hey, you're really sexy. I want to see your feet. <laughs> you say, thanks for the $50, but I'm going to keep my socks on. <laughs> yeah. No, on. You know what I say when someone says I want to see my feet? I have a golden ruler. This is my foot. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's very beautiful. Thanks. But did you get that because you felt uncomfortable people asking, or did you get it because you just thought it would be funny? Uh, funny. Well, I mean, I got it for the house, and then I was okay. like, no, the house can't use this. I'm going to use this on stream now. <laughs> so that's, that is what I 100% would say is that um, just because someone gives you support and money does not mean that they control you. Yeah. When somebody pays $9 a month to watch Netflix or whatever it is now, that doesn't mean that they get to control what is being shown on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And that's same um, situation. That's been a really prevalent thing in my time of streaming is being willing to lose the people that help financially stable you. Uh, because once again, I am my business owner. I own two businesses, actually. I don't know if you knew that, but I do. And I'm good at my business. And if you don't agree with how I'm doing my business, then exit. Because there's no there's no shareholder. You have no stock in this business. This is mine. Um, and if you are here because you enjoy it, or if you want to help in some way, I thoroughly appreciate that. But in the end, I am a professional. <laughs> you can refuse service to whoever Let you want to. Yeah. And if I want to hire somebody for something in particular, that's another story. It's more, it's also like unsolicited advice. I didn't ask for it. Yeah. And the best thing is, not even the best, the worst thing is, is that keyboard warriors just suck. Like, mm. really, they just suck. Yeah. And um, it can also be people close to you, too. So just set your boundaries. Boundaries yeah. are strict. Just, yeah, just know, don't ever feel obligated. Now, you asked for somebody that you are modding for. In the end, it is up to the person that it's their channel. If they are okay with those comments coming through and they don't want you to ban them because they are afraid of losing monetary um, involvement and stuff like that, that's on them. And that's, that's the one sucky thing about mods is that you don't get to decide for that person's channel. It might not be what you agree with and you can voice that because, you know, they bring you on as somebody that they trust their your opinion. Yeah. Uh, but in the end, if they're like, I need a lot of money, I can just, you know, get past it. OK, that's that's their thing. So um, that's where it definitely I know a lot of people try to protect their streamer. Uh, but it is up to the streamer to decide how protected they want to be. So I think that would just be a conversation you would have. But if you're a streamer and you have situations like that where people are coming in and making you feel uncomfortable, um, you why you would not work in a toxic environment anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, if if you are wanting to. So I, I guess if we're talking about like a moderation kind of standpoint uh, and not saying this is you, Mother Pepper, but if like a moderator is wanting like a, the streamer to change things that they're doing or how they believe or how they handle certain situations then at that point, that's not a compatible um, role for streamer moderator, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they're not willing to talk about it because the, the streamer has their thing set up for a reason. And a lot of times you come onto the team because you agree with certain things. And yeah, just because you would disagree with the way that a streamer is doing something, uh, does it mean you need to take authority in handling that outside of talking to the streamer it's so hard to word <laughs> agree though but, yeah but like step away if it's not for you 
Like if you if you can't agree on certain things, step away. Yeah. They'll find new people. Also, if you're a streamer, you don't need to collect mods. If somebody is not a good mod or they haven't been around, it is okay to unmod them because once you start collecting mods, then you just have like almost a security breach situation potentially available. Yeah. Stuff Having like my that. small mod team was the best decision. <laughs> we go through and we remove once a year inactive mods and we just message them. We're like, hey, we've noticed that you haven't been around in a long time. We're going to currently remove you. If you uh, feel like you can be active in the community again in the future, just reach out and we'll gladly add you back in. But the amount of stuff that, that. gets talked about in our in our mod yeah. channel um, is is most of the time stuff that the community can't know. So um, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that we keep that stuff, you know, tight lit. Uh, another <laughs> one, have you, how have you explained streaming and meet and greet and everything with your children? Uh, Leif's experienced it, hasn't he? Yeah, like he is always asking to stream. He's also had his own meet and greet, um, which was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. He had it at Guardian Con. Um, it's nothing that I've really had to explain because he's experienced it practically his whole life. So it's normal to him. Like mom works in front of a camera. Yep. Uh, that, that, I don't know. I haven't really explained it. He knows same whenever with, I'm in here though, I'm working. Yeah. He's same tired. with Charlie. He doesn't know obviously what happens at conventions and stuff like that. Cause he's never been um, going to, we went to state farm in, in 2019 and then we went to Boston with Sam for the NASA event in 2019. And that, uh, those are the only two times that he's ever gone anywhere that was work related. Um, and even then, uh, he didn't come to state farm with us. He went to the children's museum with my mother-in-law and at the Boston event, thankfully not as many people were there that knew who Ben was. So we were kind of able to stay mm -hmm. off to the side and yeah that was really nice noticed. i remember yeah, yeah. we're like uh we might need security and then it was it was so good yeah it was just it was relaxed so if we ever bring him to a convention gcx will be the one that he most likely will come to first the likelihood of that is higher here. because my dad uh recently bought a house in uh, in and around the tampa area um <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so it'll be nice for us to fly into Orlando. They'll come pick up Charlie and watch him um, over at Guardian Con, and then we'll go meet them afterwards um, and or, you know, before or whatever. So mm -hmm. it'll be it'll be nice. The, so the likelihood of him being part of something with GCX in the future is high because he is interested, but uh, he understands that there's a lot of people there and that's when we're working. And he really understands that when we have to work, we're working. So Yeah. Yeah, Leif does too. Like, he knows my mom's working. I hate telling him that, though, whenever he, like, wants to spend time with me and stuff like that. It's rough. Yeah. But that's a that's a balance thing. I have yep. to work when I need to work, and that's why I have my strict schedule. Of, and like, it's, it's off the clock. no different if you if you worked in an office. Yeah. Like, if your kid called and you're like, I want to hang out with you, and you're like, I'll see you at six. Like that. Yep. See you later, buddy. <laughs> that's just how it is. Uh, in a convention setting, is it uncomfortable for an older fan to approach you for an autograph other than being respectful? What is the proper etiquette to follow? And I think this goes yeah. for anybody, any anywhere. It doesn't even need to be at a convention. Um, just make sure that that person's not currently engaged in something else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, make eye contact. Yeah. That really goes with literally anybody. I've had so many different age viewers show up. I love it all the same. Mm -hmm. Nothing's really different for me. As long as you're respectful, I'll be respectful back. Yeah, that's all we ask. We get noticed um, when we when we were going out on dates and stuff like that. Often uh, we would get noticed at restaurants and stuff like that. And we we only have one requirement is if Charlie's with us, then it's going to be a hey, nice to meet you. We got to go kind of thing. Um, or if they want a picture with Ben, then uh, I need to be 100 percent available to be with Charlie. And I usually remove him from the area because uh, we just don't want him in pictures with fans just yet um yeah. and then but if it's just like the two of us and we're out and about then by all means wait till we're done eating our meal at least yeah. <laughs> and then you know come over and say hi or a lot of people would stop us um as we were walking out of a restaurant and we're totally fine with that too uh there was one time that i went to target with charlie uh, a long time ago, and a kid tagged me on Twitter. He said, hey, Mrs. Dr. Lupo, 
I work at Target. I just saw you and Charlie there. I didn't want to interrupt you because I know that it's you and him time, but I just wanted to say hi. And I really love your husband's channel. And I was just like, great. Looking at the picture, the kid's 16. And he was just so nice. And even like the the kids at the grocery store, when I do my grocery pickup, they know my car by this point. Yeah. <laughs> like they see me from coming into the parking lot on the other side of the parking lot. And my boxes are already there ready <laughs> and waiting for me. Um, and they they don't, you know, try to treat me any differently. Usually when they hand me my receipt, they'll be like, I totally saw that Ben did this silly thing in Tarkov and it was super cool or something like that. Or when Build Against Cancer was happening, they're like, one kid was like, I donated $20 to Build Against Cancer. Thanks for what you guys do. And I was like, cool, thanks. Like, just leave it normal and don't don't make it anything. Because like we said before, <laughs> we're people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, just be respectable. Yep. Not it. Your age doesn't matter. Oh, and just wear deodorant. Shower, please. Yes, please shower. Oh. Please I know, shower. I know if, if you get, if you're a person that, that sweats a lot or you get nervous sweat or, you know, you just get warm because those convention halls are very warm, pack a couple extra t-shirts in your bag. Yeah. Cologne or perfume. Does, yeah. It does not, it does not matter if you have to run and change. Ben, Ben and I change. Um, when we get done during the day, before we go out to dinner or anything, we both go back and Ben will usually shower. We'll both change. Um, because we had just, we'd just been in a, basically a hot box <laughs> for eight hours. Um, uh, when Ben is on stage, I, I mean, I carry deodorant with me, um, in my bag and when he gets off stage, he'll come down and sometimes he'll change shirts and sometimes mm -hmm. he'll just throw on deodorant and call it a day. Like it's okay because you're in a high pressure situation, even if you're a fan or if you're somebody that's there to work. Mm -hmm. So, yep. um, uh, my question I'm, for Sam Lupo. Oh. Oh, let me do it. Uh, yeah, having you. such a famous <laughs> thirst-inducing husband. <laughs> do, you, do you feel? I mean, I think he's thirst-inducing. I drool when I see him. So <laughs> do you find yourself feeling like you need to defend? Uh, or are you kind of proud? Like, yeah, that's my husband. He's so hot and everyone knows it. Or maybe a mix of both. I'm curious about that. Um... I think that at the beginning, I defended a lot, again, because a lot of people didn't respect the fact that I existed. Um, mm -hmm. Now, it's not really that big of a thing. Like, people will make comments about how good he looks in a picture or whatever, and, I, and I'm reading them just like, I know that. <laughs> You're right, though. Yeah, and even, even with him, like my opinion of what he looks like and everything is more important than what people's opinions on the internet are. So he would rather hear that from me day in and day out versus any comment from anybody. So um, I think at the beginning, I definitely was very defensive on any any flirty comment that I would see because I'd be like, I would I would click on their name and it became almost obsessive at the, at the point. I would click on their name. I would find them on Twitter or social media and be like, are you Damn. a girl? Yeah, they, I, <laughs> Do you remember when we talked about when I was in a really bad spot when Ben first started streaming? It was because oh. of stuff like that. It was because I was invisible to a large number of people. Granted, at that time, it was like 100 people in chat at a time, but I was invisible. Um, and it was very difficult for me to uh, be pushed to the side like I don't exist and see oh. all these girls clamor for my husband. And it was a total slap in the face, lack of respect. And maybe some of them didn't know that he was married, but Ben talks about me quite often. He and, does. Uh, I love it. <laughs> and so if they were around for anything longer than 10 minutes, they would potentially know something or, you know, see a ring on his hand. He doesn't wear his wedding ring now because he lost weight and it's too big. But uh, <laughs> and but it just it was a very much as someone that's a fairly confident person. I know I'm a badass person. Like, yeah, you are. Everyone should be really happy to be friends with me because I'm so cool. Like, <laughs> that's the confidence yeah. that I have in in myself, almost to the point of being very cocky. Ben says that I am oh. the most humble person he knows <laughs> in the most that's sarcastic awesome. voice that he can. <laughs> um, so it was very difficult to all of a sudden have this such high confidence in who I am as a person because I grew that over years to instantly just being like, you don't exist. 
Yeah. Ah, no. uh, well, don't worry. You'll never get that from me because I'm asexual. <laughs> Ben's a good guy. That's about it. That's all. <laughs> Oh Don't man, worry. is there any other questions in here that you were saying? I think we have time for maybe one more. Let me see. Also, Eric Hush, you are a beautiful man. And I stopped I scrolling for a second, so. <laughs> yeah. I am also married to a handsome man. He's just not a streamer. <laughs> um. Oh man, I I stopped scrolling like way up where those questions were, so. <laughs> oh wait. Uh, there we Sam... go, we're at the bottom. Oh. Yeah, Sam or Mrs. Ardilbo, do you have any pet peeves that fans do when you are having a meet and greet? Pet peeves. Um, I don't think so, at least not yet. I think... I'm trying to think of, like, how exactly to word it. <laughs> My pet peeve is when people come up and dump their problems on you in person. Oh, I haven't had that, but holy heck. And it happens obviously way more to Ben. Um, and, and so many people are like, you, you were there in a dark time for me and stuff like that. Great. That's fine. I want to hear that. I want to know that, that our work is, is done good for somebody. Um, and yeah. it's helped somebody. But I don't need to in person while you're standing there and staring at me and there's a line of 50 whatever people behind you waiting for you to explain your whole life story to me. Um, and it just it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, also, yeah. when you bring like 10 million things to sign. One thing I'll, in and out, please. I'll only bring nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine then. OK, OK. I'll keep it under the tip. Th those are, I think, are going to be the two, the two things is that dumping all your problems and and treating me like I can save them or save you, mm -hmm. and bringing so many things to sign. Yeah, I haven't had that issue. Uh, honestly, I'm grateful for anybody that wants to say hi to me at meet and greets. I always feel like you and your piece might show up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine. Oh no, the one but that me and you went to. Thing. Uh, when we had ours at, at TwitchCon, the first like 10 people were just for you. And I was like, great. And then the like, rest of them were all for you. I was like, oh, well, here we go. <laughs> I felt so bad. But at the beginning, I was just like, great. Like, no, but it, it seriously is all about Ben and never about me. You know, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I had this like thing in my head where, where some people are like, oh, do you want to sign this too? And I'm like, no, if you don't want me to, <laughs> like, I don't yeah. care. I'm not going to sign stuff out of courtesy. <laughs> I don't know. We're having meet and greets together. So you better be there for both of us. <laughs> I think now it'll be a big difference. That was my first, uh, my first official on my own without Ben. We did the oh. three minute break one at, uh, at Guardian Con a couple of years ago. Um, but in that one, we had like a decent amount of people show up for all of us. Maybe like. 30 people total in the hour that we were there and that's fine <laughs> um oh my goodness. yeah ours so. was wrapped around they had to cut the line it was so cool mm -hmm. i mean most of it was once again it was for you like toward the end but like i was so proud yeah you got there like yeah but that's because you root your friends on i was so happy i'm excited for our next one our next sandwich because we were supposed to like do t-shirts every year and well <laughs> yeah haven't had Oops. to <laughs> Oops, boops. Oh, I just um, noticed the time. I think it's uh, time to wrap. <laughs> yeah. That's this is good. a good, a good talk. I know that the first 30 minutes was us, like, literally just being <laughs> absolute wrecks. Um, but, you know, that's what uh, that's what we do. Oh, I see lots of hey, highs and hellos. Oh, thanks, Ben. The good doctor <laughs> said to say hello. Hello, everybody. We are just ending, but real quick. Hi. <laughs> I'm Sam and this is also I'm Sam. Sam. <laughs> um, and if you haven't been on my channel yet, this is the magic word. And we talk every single Friday from 8.30 a.m. Pacific to 10.30 a.m. Uh, just about various things. And um, we decided today that we are a chaotic good show. So, you know, we yeah. talk about good things, but we talk about hard things. We're a little crazy. Um, we have a YouTube. We have a YouTube. Oh, my gosh. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> Go subscribe. 
you can oh. get, like you can be in the first 100 maybe yes follow you sam um on twitch as well because we're gonna go hang out with her here in just a little bit uh <laughs> i think we definitely need to do magic word merch for the next convention put our logo on a t-shirt yeah, that would be so fun instead of a sandwich one yeah so. Yes, yeah, follow the Magic Word YouTube, follow Sam's Twitch, follow this channel. Oh, we're at 55! <laughs> <laughs> refresh again, refresh again! 65! <laughs> refresh again, refresh again! Wait, wait, can we get to 100? Can we get to 100 before we... Here. I can sit here for a few more minutes. Yeah, I can too. Don't worry, Emily, my stream can wait. <laughs> this is important we want to we haven't even posted a video i think our first video might be coming up on sunday um her twitch uh let's do this do the sam command oh it's me sam <laughs> all right can we get we are at 76 <gasps> Dang. can we get no, no. to 100 <laughs> please <laughs> pretty please 78 pretty please moving up come on moving on up. subs on day one to the 82 <laughs> you're probably four harley because we had three before we let anybody know probably 82 84 we're just gonna count the whole time. Come okay, on, come on. This is so. This is what you get on the magic word. Us sitting here refreshing our YouTube. Eighty six. <laughs> as the year I was born. Fresh. Eighty seven. Oh, eighty nine. Eighty nine. It's going so fast. Eleven more. Who's gonna be in the first one hundred subscribers? Ninety one. We have nine more. Who is 90. gonna be number one hundred? Ninety five. Oh, 96? I can't refresh. <laughs> Hey, refresh. Oh, no. Did we break? 97? Okay. <laughs> Come on, guys. We need three more. 98? You want 99? 99? 100? Now, can we get past 100? Thank you. We're so excited. We'll get content. <laughs> oh, wait, Sam, do we know when we're getting um content up? Um, I think this Sunday was going to be the first episode that we were going to try to put up. And we are, we backlogged all of our episodes. So we're going to be starting with episode one. So we will be 14 weeks behind. <laughs> and that is okay. Um, and then eventually we are going to be moving these all onto a podcast um, platform. And uh, then I think we'll probably just, you know, blast the first 10 or so out there mm -hmm. and then uh, and then start to release them in order. So. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, husband, for have sending everyone over at the very last second because I forgot to tell you that we were live earlier. But yeah, just in general, we're a chill stream every Friday. And today we talked about our story of streaming. Uh, we've talked a little bit about politics and love languages and yeah. uh, parenting and a little bit of everything. So uh, we're also going to be playing games once a month. So... Yeah, if you guys want to, uh, maybe we'll do a something on our Twitter, yeah. Magic Word Twitter. Thank you, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Everybody, goodbye. We have to do our cute little outro. Okay, bye. Bye.